I have a new sport, my lads. Nor me noticing. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful thing. So it's quite a nice sport. And what you do is you wait for the normies to notice a thing, and then you slip in next to them and go, yeah, weird, isn't it? Here's another a bunch of examples of that happening. Notice a trend? And for some I reason, actually did this the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was buying shoes at a shop in the street, and in there, there was an old woman behind the counter, an oldish woman, like, sat talking, and a young man who was also behind the counter. And the old woman was just talking about, oh, it was so much safer back in our day. You know, we just used to lock uh, the door. We didn't used to lock the doors. We just used to go out. And I was just sat there trying on these shoes. I was like, yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> and I just carried it. Well, I mean, there are certain neighborhoods in, in <laughs> England that you're still able to do such a thing. You won't find them in London. Yeah. Dan mentioned a great example. This is very Swindon centric, to be fair. Um, Manchester Road, which is not English, and then Old Town. A little yeah. Pakistan. Just, yeah, just visualize those two different places. They're, they're within a very short drive of each other. And my God, are they different countries? Yes. And this is not an uncommon experience for people. But before I go on, I have some shilling to do. This is um, Father Kelvin. He has descended from upon a high to give us the good news. And this is that he is with Lotus Eaters now. He, he has escaped the clutches and the evil of, of other places. And is here instead behind a paywall in which you must pay and you will get access to his holiness and you can watch his show. Pope. Well, you know, better than the Pope. <laughs> He's holier he? than the rest of us. Yeah, don't get me wrong. He has much better takes than the Pope. Who would you rather have dinner with, Calvin or the Pope? Obviously, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you can come and join and uh, you sign up and you watch his show. And if you want to interact, you can send in video comments to his holiness and you must say in these video comments, my holy father, to make sure we know it's for him. But you get a gold tier membership to do that, and you get 50% off for the first three months if you use code CRUSADE. Unrelated. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's enough shilling. Let's get to the no, normie noticing, shall we? Because it's, uh, it's good fun. So here we go. This chap is, is my victim of today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. <laughs> Mr. Douglas, uh, write out this tweet. Limited who could mention after a while. He says, I don't know when it became socially contested whether or not it was acceptable to play music, radicalized YouTube talk shows, or football match on public transport. But could we please return to a prior norm where this clearly wasn't accepted? I feel like this man who's labeled himself as a liberal-minded social democrat Oh yeah, um, <laughs> this would, is what have, I mean. <laughs> would have issues with any solution presented to him on how to return to those prior norms. Pragmatic European and London Scot. Yes, he might, might have been noticing a few things from living in London for some reason. And he says here, um, in open brackets, I asked the 30-something man to stop. No further details. No, nope, just man. All right. He grumpily and reluctantly did. Now a teenager, no further details, is talking to her mum on speakerphone. This battle is totally lost short of train companies and TFL making an actual thing of it, isn't it? Which they won't. You, you, need, you need the train company. To come in and be like, oi, we don't do that here. <laughs> just to get a meeting with Sadiq Khan. He's on speakerphone. Hang on a second. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, course, wait, wait. Here we end, go. Here's his, here's his uh, liberal mind, <laughs> that liberal minded social democrat popping out here. The crescendo of Mr. Douglas writing, uh, turning off comments for a fair few um, racists in my mentions. But, okay. Okay, Douglas. That's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but for the record, the offending parties were, to the best of my knowledge, mm. from white British backgrounds. Wow, what were the odds that you only ran into white British people doing this in London? To, to the best of his knowledge, is that the same way that um, you'll, you'll see... <laughs> He's saying like, it's not. Le, Le Chandres and uh, Rodriguez in America filed and murder reports as white non Americans, non-Hispanic non white. whites. Yes. <laughs> Endlessly happens. Now, this chap may be telling the truth, of course, let's take him at his word, although there's actually a 34% chance of that even being true, which is not a bet I'd take. But okay, fine. That's that may be the case. But this is this is not new. This this subject. I mean, we all know it. I've I've spoken previously about my, my lovely interactions at the university of getting on the university bus. And my God, the Arab international students, you are a charming thing. Your your families, you wouldn't stop talking to them every day on the bus. Out you bring decibel meter with you. Hey, I should have. And um, well, that's a cultural thing. That's just that's a different culture because, of course, um, British public transport. There is a very unspoken rule, which is shut up. Be silent. It turns out in the, the grand scheme of things, in the global milieu of different cultures, there are very few that value peace and quiet. Yeah. I, I've actually had a few foreign friends when I was at university. I had to tell to uh, keep it down. Yeah. We're on, we're on a bus. And they look at me funny like, it's not a library. <laughs> but I'm, it kind of is. Shut it. <laughs> so <laughs> Everything in England is a library, actually. Yeah. 
And um, right, okay, that's a cultural difference, and it's a thing that you can observe in this chat. Uh, is a, a form of that because this is not new. I, I couldn't find the post, but I found an old post back in the day when someone said that he recalled seeing a quote hash account mention the the Arab telephone calls out loud with their mum on FaceTime, and now he couldn't unsee it. I couldn't find that one, but it turns out the source of that was actually Ukipper of all people. Oh. <laughs> was the one that radicalized another normie in London. But there we are. So um, this chap, Mr. Douglas here. How did you get radicalized? Well, someone pointed out this thing I keep seeing. Yeah, I kept hearing the ceiling bird, and other people didn't. Um, but Mr. Douglas carried on. Judging by the feedback I've had, this is an increasingly large source of collective irritation. Yes, weird. Weird how that wasn't the case, and now is the common case. Maybe one for Transport for London to think about, since we do quite rightly have a range of campaigns aimed at behavior change <laughs> on public transport. <laughs> we'll nudge them into doing the right thing. <laughs> I mean... Listen, what? if we can social engineer Drag Queen Story Hour, we can social engineer quiet time on the train. Well, TFL didn't respond to this subject. They're not interested in this. No, they're interested in other matters. <laughs> they were just like, this is a lost cause, bro. But um, someone did drop a poster campaign that I think we'll like. Here we are. Uh, Drutka has come out to make us a poster campaign. Mate, keep it down. You're not in Nigeria anymore. Give your head a wobble. Loud noises are a public nuisance. No ifs, no buts. Reminder, not everyone thinks that Afro Beats is fire. Check out headphones. <laughs> yeah, don't play the Islamic nasheeds on the bus. Save it for the masjid, mate. I mean, that's a, I've had that. Yeah, I've had that a few times in London, actually. It's just like, really? I'm going to a different carriage. Um, not racist, just like life. Uh, instead of sending five minute long voice notes, try texting instead. Another good piece of advice if you're on public transport. And of course, um, certain presumption of literacy there, though, isn't there? Yeah, presumption of internal monologue. You might have noticed um, you can't see Douglas's post that he's responding to because Douglas blocked our king for oh. daring to do what he asked, which is a poster campaign. But there we are. Um, we have got an artist's interpretation of an average London bus, though. So we can listen. <laughs> I, do, I take trains fairly often, and this is really unsufferable. Well, yeah. It's totally true. Like, bunch, just, I don't want to just say foreigners making lots of noise, but that's the only accurate description I can think of. There are, of course, you know, nights out where you get the late train. Oh, you, you occasionally get northerners making lots of noise as well. There, there yeah. are drunk people, there are Scots. Yeah. You know, people Liverpool acting. Liverpool isn't British, and this is one of the <laughs> reasons why. But that... It's not just Liverpool, but anyway, Geordies. <laughs> anyway, carry on. But they're acting inappropriately because they've been drinking alcohol or they're, they're very rowdy or they're Liverpudlians. But then there's, then there's you know, people who just don't even understand the aspect of, shh, you're on, a, you're on public transport. Shut your mouth before I kill you. And they, they don't get that because they're not from that culture. Um, there is a new measurement Drug has also come out with. Just to say, I mean, personally, I found best practice when you're drunk on the train is to pass out. Yeah. That way you're nice and quiet for everyone. Polite thing to do. Mm. But, but Drutka has a new uh, measurement for quality of life because we've got all these happiness measurements. He's come up with the loud music on the bus coefficient. Now, you can forget GDP or, or any kind of measurement for social health. Uh, scientists are now using the LMC to figure out whether or not your standard of living is going up or down. And um, uh, the scientists are baffled by why so much of London is very high on the loud bus coefficient, but the countryside is less. Who knows? Who knows? But he's not the only normie, Mr. Douglas, to, to have a bad day of, of being noticed. Um, another chap blew up. His tweet here. Lewisham Hospital. Now, he's waiting in the emergency room with his father. They've been waiting for 17 hours. I hope it's not that much of an emergency. <laughs> That's a really stretching <laughs> you still definition. Got day to wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're waiting 17 hours, and they've got another 21 to spare before, <laughs> before the service gets up to them. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I mean, this, this guy um, who's in health decided to, to blow this up and was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. That's, that's terrible. But then a lot of people are like, hmm, I seem to remember the ONS. Do me a favor. Turn around. Take a picture of the waiting room. <laughs> that's what I want. Just, or, or take a picture of the staff. The very last time that sure. I was in the um, uh, emergency or the A&E waiting room, all of the staff were on their phones, not doing anything. Sure. And it seemed that ev everybody, including those who were actually seeing people, were taking a damn long time to actually get around to anything. Yep. There are, there are endless problems in the NHS, that's, that's damn sure. 
Um, well, we have a map of the ONS data, in case you're wondering. I found the Lewisham Hospital in the, in the, the area it's situated in, and um, 42% of people in that area are born outside of the UK. Mm. Presumably, they're all nurses. Dentists, all... perhaps, <laughs> Dentists. as we found out. Orthodontists, uh, <laughs> every single one of them working at the NHS. <laughs> it, it's just that they're all so sick that they also <laughs> don't have time to work. It, and therefore, the hours are 21 if well, you I mean, wish to get emergency treatment. You know, in closed working spaces, illnesses tend to spread. They cycle through, don't they? Yeah. I, I, Bizarre number of instances of malaria. I, I posted um, the subsequent data as well. If you want to look up the white British uh, population of, of this area. Um, it goes down to 29.8%. So we're looking roughly about 70% of the population are not white British. But this was done in... Who are not employed by the NHS. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this was done in 2020, of course, which after those millions since then, this is even more out of date. Yeah. But uh, I saw a lot of people responding, being like, well, don't you know uh, this particular speciality of healthcare? 50% of those people are born outside the UK working in NHS. I, I, I'm struggling to believe that the millions... Uh, living in well, London or the Lewisham area, are, are all orthodontists. Or, or, or maybe they all just specialize in feet or something, and that's why everything else is missing. We just hired too many feet doctors or ass doctors or something. But there we are. So <laughs> Come in with the pain in your shoulder. It's like, oh, you're out of luck, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've only got the ass doctors, I'm afraid. <laughs> so you, know, you can try. That's, that might solve one thing. Nobody in Nigeria gets prostate cancer. Because <laughs> all of them are <laughs> <laughs> Just all ass doctors. As, the, <laughs> I don't have it included, actually, but there is a bit of a scandal around that. Oh, yeah. Because, of course, lots... Right, I've, I've got it all included. Ah, never mind. We shall enjoy later. But that's, that's another normie. He, he kind of got bullied for a while um, on Twitter.com, and people have been like, hmm, hmm, I wonder why. I wonder why there's 21 hours in that waiting period. Might be very similar to that dentistry we looked at in the queue. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But I'll end this off, because um, you can endlessly play the sport of normie noticing, mm. and I encourage you to. I lend this off with a, a certain group of people who deserve scorn. I think we'll all hate, uh, rightfully. Journalists? Uh, close. Just <laughs> almost. Politicians? Not, well, almost as bad. <laughs> activists. Oh. Ah. Yimby. Oh, activists. foreign activists. Oh. No, 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 not foreign at all. Yimbies. Right. This is what makes it worse. Well, it's... I, I, I saw this discussion, and I think I'm certain, I, I, I know the thread that you're going to go down here, but I'm pretty sure this guy is Turkish. I mean, you sell is mm. very British name. I mean, this chap, yeah, he does have a Turkish flag now. But it's not, it, it's not an exclusively foreign matter. It seems to be largely a London matter, which, yes, I will grant you, is, is foreign. Almost an exclusively <laughs> oh, yeah. foreign matter. But there is 34% left. <laughs> is this another case like in that South Park episode I've referenced before where they want to turn everywhere into L.A. because they're from L.A. and if they can't live in nice little countryside <laughs> towns, everyone has to live in L.A. I live in London, so you have to as well. Yeah. yeah seemingly so. Now, for people who don't know, I don't think this is a term outside the UK, to be frank. So we have NIMBYs. Now, NIMBY means not in my backyard. And this is the kind of person that if you want to change, the meme is, essentially, if you want to build a shed to put your tools in that harms nobody, doesn't do anything bad to anyone, they're your neighbor, and they will still complain and block your permission to do that because... Yeah. And this extends to people saying, yeah, of course, we should take every immigrant under the sun, just not here. Yeah. Over there, so where that's, you live. That's the NIMBYs, which, uh, you know, it's a funny meme and could be applied in places. Now, there are the YIMBYs, which are in response, and that's yes in my backyard. Now, the yes in my backyard people are the worst human beings I have ever seen. <laughs> I, I, uh, just, I just want to interrupt. The Taliban were better people. <laughs> I just want to interrupt, because there's, there's a remarkable sort of Venn diagram of YIMBYs and people of 25 and under. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, now, again, carry on as the worst people you've ever seen. Carry on. London plays its part in that. Too, yeah, I bet it does. To be sure. These are the sort of people who post on Reddit that they get upset when they're dragged out into nature. So, this chap here is saying that, okay, the current plan is to build 300,000 homes. It'll take 50 years to fill the housing shortage by doing that. Tackling it sooner would require 442,000 homes per year. Uh, and then we need to, for the next 25 years, or 654,000 homes per year. And to get the housing shortage done in a decade, that's I'm going to cover more of this in my segment <laughs> because this. And he says, why. he says here, brownfield is not enough. And to clear up, um, brownfield is when you're taking industrial areas, places that have already been built upon, and building houses there. So he's saying 
We can't take the areas that have already been industrialized and maybe have some rotting carcass of a warehouse on it that we can knock down and build houses there. We have to start paving over the fields, lad. That's right. I'm an environmentalist. The areas that are listed as areas of outstanding natural beauty have to go. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is this man's proposal. To, if you wanted to fix the housing shortage, you'd have to do that. Thank you, you Mr. Just want to build, immigrant. If you just want to build houses, okay? Um, a local man was quite angry at this because he quite likes England in a minority in London. And uh, he responded by saying, James, when will you and Priced Out UK start campaigning to stop immigration <laughs> so young people can get on the property ladder? And this, this twerp responds, That's amazing. Because we're not an immigration campaign, Jack. We're a housing campaign. You have got in there. He's, he's like, well, house. great point. What's There's the literally word? no connection between immigration and housing because immigrants all live on the streets. They, they do. They, they, <laughs> they migrate. Well, they've got they no the choice because there aren't enough houses being built. I mean, they, they float. I don't, <laughs> just like, like, immigrants don't sleep. They're constantly manning the NHS. <laughs> what, like, like, what does James think is happening? They're all sorting out your feet and your ass. You know, don't you notice? Uh, I feel like, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to direct your attention to the aesthetics range of merch that we have on the store. These are beautiful images that I think work really well as posters or mugs. So if you want to support us, going over to the merch store at shop.loadseater.com is easily the best way other than signing up on the website. Notice? Uh, yeah, um, it doesn't make any bloody sense, of course. He just responds, well, you're ineffectual and useless and wrong. Obviously. So. Sh shut it, because that's mad. But the Yimbies as a tribe, tribe little dick, they were very upset at how dare he say such a thing and, and call them out. So they went into a, a brief frenzy, and, and this is a lot of noticing happening in a very small period of time. So the NBA's here, for example. This one responded. This is anti-growth Malthusian nonsense. I, what? I, I, I don't actually... Just for a moment. I hate people who just say things. Like, speak <laughs> English. <laughs> no, just, no, no, I, the, the, no. I mean, I know what Malthusianism yeah. is, because I think most people probably learned about it in school, but... And, and I'm stuck up your ass. So Th Thomas Malthus was, I think, he was a 19th century philosopher who was like, "Oh my gosh, if the population keeps growing like this, we're all going to die." And actually, we didn't all die. Well, I, I think I'm not richer for knowing that. Well, to, to to be fair to him, to to put it in the best faith possible, I think at the time that he was writing, it was pretty much true because of the lack of development in agricultural processes. Yeah. But when we started to learn how to, you know diversify, uh, expand the productivity of particular bits of labor what using if, technology. This whole, thing, more food? this whole thing called the Industrial Revolution happened. N not many people have heard of it. Um, <laughs> that meant that actually a lot... Well, those that have considered a mistake. A lot, a lot of people uh, can live on... Yes. Uh, I, was, I was only pausing to say man stuck up his own ass because no, no normal person talks like that. But he, he goes on to say... You would never say to fix the housing crisis, you must slow population growth and lower the birth rates, even though it has the exact same logic as blaming immigration. You know why I would never say that, Mr. Kokensian? It's because that's already happened. There is no the birth, birth rate. rate is already negative, so I don't need to say that because that's the exact same thing. Now, to prevent the complete concreting over of my country, we need to lower the immigration. What's, what's, what's Simple as. Posted here. Who cares? Oh, uh, yeah, that's it's just terrible. painful. But, like, the anti growth thing, you worship graphs. You are part of a cult that worship graphs. Oh, no, and I'm totally well, anti growth. Don't get me wrong. I, these GDP people, must burn. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that. These people actually aren't pro growth. They're not actually pro the country doing well. And that's why there are gimbies yeah, are a on, certain kind on, of hang curse. On, hang on. Pro growth, pro the country doing well. No one said these are the same thing. <laughs> Nobody said that these were in, in any way compatible. Pro growth does not mean the country doing well. What does growth mean exactly? And for the us, GDP that, going well. that would mean you know pro growth in the terms of okay, well, uh, average salaries, in real terms going up, that people are richer, maybe more kids. That would be growth. Well, when, when, slums. When I, when, I know that's not what. When he's I saying. say they worship the graph, what I mean is that one graph of immigration figures after they adjusted it skyrocketing off the edge of the graph that gets them or oh, gets them going. But anyway, um, apparently, uh, reporting people as genocide. Uh, I do like this tweet the response, which is someone just saying, personally I think controlling the level of immigration isn't really anything akin to the same sort of enforced contraception or state euthanasia but I'm an extremist, I guess which is just such a great point, like these yimbies are, are so mad they'll actually sit around and be like, don't you want to kill people? And I'm like, I just, I just want to say no on the border stamp to this guy That's, don't, don't I'm not want, killing him <laughs> Don't you want every square inch of this country to be filled by someone who was born elsewhere? Yeah, I, as you can see, there's goes on. Former director of Priced Out UK, Yimby Liberal. Which is, Someone eh. unironically calls themselves a Yimby. Honestly. You know, you know there was that spate of um, 
left wing activists in America getting the diversity experience, <clears throat> like Anna Kasparian. No, yeah, and and others uh, got it somewhat worse. Um, I don't really have that much sympathy for them. At no, first, oh, I was yeah. like, "Oh, look at them." But you talk now more about like that that anti for activist, yeah, who got yeah, murdered in the street in front of his girlfriend. His girlfriend was like, "Well, at least I did my part." I mean, he was them. white, so wasn't well, he asking for it? Says the girlfriend. Yeah, that was basically her response. And and I'm when they get what happens when these things happen, I'm not going to be terribly sympathetic. Well, you'd have to build 654,000 houses every year for, for for point of contention, just for people who don't know. We've never built 300,000 houses, the current target. It's never been done, even under the post-war period. Yeah, I'm going to go through them all. Didn't happen. Yeah. But anyway, so it's just, it's just not going to happen. But they will still sit here and be like, we can't close the borders. That would be death. <laughs> Britain will not survive. Be, being yeah. fair, if there is one people who is adapted to packing themselves like sardines into tiny households, it is foreigners. You can try. Also um, the last thing here is just someone else who decided to do the last ditch effort for the Yimby cause, which is to make probably the best argument I've ever seen. Uh, we need the immigrants to build <laughs> the houses for the immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think okay. That. It's yeah, a circular economy. It only makes sense. Anyone serious about building six hundred thousand homes? Not gonna happen. It needs to know. <laughs> if you're not need... serious about building six hundred thousand homes, then just lower immigration. Then listen. Anybody yeah. who's serious about catching that damn unicorn needs to listen <laughs> to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, not serious people. Not not a reduction in numbers. Yes, but it would be impossible to build that many houses without visas for construction workers. So if we don't get the foreigners to build the houses, we won't have enough houses to house the foreigners that we're getting to. Oh my God. Yeah, but just, just endless circle in which you eat. Unbelievable it genius. But I, I think there's also some good, uh, some good jokes. I mean, this is your average pro-immigration Yimby. Uh, fourth year's master's in physics. Pronouns. Upside yeah. down. Yeah, liberal Yimby. Liberal reform. Jesus Christ. Anime banner. 23. So I have some advice. Um, know the difference, of course. Some, some good... Uh, PR here, public <laughs> relations. Anti-immigration Yimbis, safety, kinship, order, prosperity. Some nice AI-generated versions of the future. Well, that's, that, that's the thing. I actually, uh, there are some good faith, sensible Yimbis who are like, yes, we close the borders, then we knock down all of the horrible buildings and build beautiful buildings with union flags everywhere. Yeah, but how's that Yimby? That's just like what we should do generally. Yeah, that's, like, that's, I agree. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, we build Jerusalem or whatever. Yeah, in England. That's could we have a nice country, please? Well, we rebuild Atlantis, which I'm told from <laughs> <laughs> reliable sources. It was in Doggerland, I tell you, actually was. <laughs> and then the the open borders, Jim B, delusional, um, just mad person. Uh, clearly needs uh, some kind of medication, and um, has some real world images of what they proposed and done, which is bad. Suspicious <laughs> overrepresentation <laughs> of homosexuals. Oh, yes. Okay. Will more swarthy young men to booger? Question mark. Who knows? Who knows? Might be the other way around. But anyway, my point being that that uh, normie noticing is is a very fun sport because the things they notice are comically easy to fix, and I it, sometimes it really is that easy. I mean, the best one being uh, Bakeley over here, who is just bragging about like, oh yeah, we used to be the most dangerous country on earth. We put them all in jail. I saw this too. The, this creepy to org. Right? This, this posts like usually like horror stories. And they've posted this, a prison in El Salvador. Yeah, I know, that looks great. That's fantastic. That's, that's the opposite of a horror story. That's a success story, which is why Bikini's retweeting it. Honestly, if I was running for any kind of high political office in this country, that would be my, <laughs> that would be my first campaign poster. This, but in England. This yeah. for us. <laughs> They're all Barry's. No, it's, it's not the Barry's, is it? Anyway, but this, you know, he says here, world's highest herd and murder rate equals world's highest amount of murderers. Solution, put them in jail so they can't kill anymore. Result, world's highest incarceration rate, but also safest country in Western Hemisphere. It's not rocket science. And that is true for the other examples we've gone through, because the things a normie can notice are very base, but also incredibly easy to fix. Like, you know, shh, you don't, no, no, you don't have to talk to your family out loud on FaceTime every day. Um, ever, in fact, actually, when you're on the bus, you just, you just do it when you're at home. Just do it at home. So, you know, they won't, they won't um, bother if you insist that, no, the English are upset about that. Um, the, the house building thing, that's easy to fix too. Literally, you just close the borders. And many others. Point being, um, enjoy your hunting of, of the normies. Let them know. But my God, it's a good fun.
If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Symposium series, this episode on Thomas More's Utopia. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.